So what I remember is being able to wildly experiment. It was a real um, sort of moment of being able to invent, make, and be cared for. The way that artists think about the world is a kind of thinking that we need as a culture if we are to create a different and more humane relationship to these tools. The organization in many ways is um, both a direct support mechanism for artists as well as being a platform and a resource. I've had access to people to run ideas through. I really needed to problem solve. This idea of what does it mean to undo these sort of architectures of inhumanity. So when I landed into architecture Elmina and extraction within um, and on, you know, oceans as a superhighway and ships and hulls of ships as a different kind of architecture, then the trade, you know, then the harvesting and um, exploitation and dispossession of people of color. And then I worked my way to liberation. It was this totally raw, just this crazy laboratory. The amount of information and resources that people were sharing, the way people were making things. And you saw the, the seeds of projects. I think my challenge as an artist has been to try to take this thing, which I, you know, I also love coding and I love just generative form, but I want it to feel like painting. Alumni like Taeyun Choi, um, you know, who came out of IBM at the same time as me, we had that connection. And we wanted to create a space like that, a place where people could come and have experience the sort of magic that we were feeling at IBM, but in uh, educational context. I've been focused on finding as many ways as possible to connect people to climate change and issues that I would call multi-species ethics and what it means to live on this planet. I've been driven by a pretty ridiculous quest to nudge the needle a tiny bit to the side, to open up some kind of space where humans are not the absolute center of everything. Both of my residencies at IBEAM were opportunities to try out a bunch of different things. The projects that were incubated at IBEAM in 2009 was the first of what became a long series of projects that I would describe as these landscape pageants. Everything is coexisting in its software-driven animation. Our response to the major upheaval in the world was to essentially just rethink what our role could be in a moment of chaos and transition. We saw an opportunity to bring in a highly engaged group of artists and to bring them together to think about a relationship to a digitally mediated world. The works in Rishon, I am deliberate is a phrase is nothing theory. I was thinking a lot about that kind of um, eerie connection between Black Americans and robots, because when Black Americans came to this country, we were completely disembodied. We were seen as objects, and we didn't have any kind of humanity. I made a performance with a virtual environment of a sugar mill to tell the story of, of my family and also to show how us as, as African descendants, we have transcended even the hardest injustices. The ways in which artists enable the rest of us to imagine a different future. If we look back and say, the way that we used to organize, condition, craft, direct ourselves has led us to this point of loss. How must we rearrange? But the way to come through loss is invention. One of the most exciting initiatives that we've had the opportunity to launch at IBEAM is the IBEAM Center for the Future of Journalism. 
One of our artists that we worked with last year on a project in collaboration with BuzzFeed News actually won a Pulitzer Prize for the creative approach that they took to telling a very complex story. We're building on a young, adventurous legacy as we've transformed into a digital-first, distributed catalyst and incubator. There's a window of opportunity for artists to actually help us think through our relationship with this world that we're entering. And it's important that we do that now.